Greetings to you, Max. Hello. This is Tisdu. Tisdu, thanks for joining. You got approval. Yes. Thank you. Uh, it's, a ho it's an honor to have you here. Thank you. Uh, you may start introducing yourself and whatever you want to deliver to the group. Welcome, everyone. I am Tisdu from the vessel from North America. We have the vessel that comes around in North America and in the Northern Hemispheres. We control the severity of weather, seismic activity, solar flare activity that meets the Earth, and we try to keep it within satisfactory levels. Although some are so strong, even we cannot fully contain them. At this time, there are several solar flares around your planet. They interrupt the energy. Have you noticed that you have not been feeling quite the same the last few days? This would be an interruption of your energy pathways by solar energy. However, right now, I was going to ask you all to uh, bear with me a little because I would like to explain a little bit about the colonies. I think it's important that the Earth knows about these. Max has been very instrumental in helping us form these colonies. We have tried to do this several times before without success. And the reason for that was telepathy versus human condition. We could not possibly understand you in a way that we should. I'm this... sorry I interrupted you. Keep breathing. You kind of speak too much and don't breathe. Take pauses. Thank you. Where was I? Uh, the colonies were not successful but you, because you didn't understand the humans. But now, yes. We do have some human telepaths in our first colony. There are six, which we speak to daily. We are starting to you understand human emotions and patterns, spirituality in the way that you see it. Your physicalities, the intensity of your thoughts, We were never able to do this, and therefore other colonies have failed. Also, we do it a different way now. We used to abduct, take people without them knowing they were being taken, and this was wrong. We have to apologize for that, because now we know how humans really feel about that sort of action on our part and now we ask permission before we take them to a colony there's so much more to tell but i think i should ask you if you have any questions to this point you can ask anything it does not have to be about the colony. You mentioned the possibility of holographic interface with groups here versus visiting the <coughs> colonies. Yes. We have a group that meets that would be very interested. How would we go about doing that? We have not organized that sort of group yet. But we are working on that because we feel that there are some that cannot come through our teleportation methods to be with us. They have to remain on Earth because of health issues or physiological problems that we cannot fix with our technology. Therefore, we are planning to come meet with groups of people 
perhaps three aliens to a group of 50 or 60. But it would start smaller. Does that, we will be doing that. And other channelers around your planet have taken note from their sources. We were the first to tell the Earth about this, and now others are speaking about it. Any specific channels you can name? I am not to okay. speak of them. But they do exist, and they are genuine. Anybody, any more questions? I mean, there is there more, many more. Other realities. Uh, planets uh, that communicate strictly uh, by color. There are those species that have color as a language. Yes. There are two in particular. Yes. Can you name those? We do not name them. Are they humanoid? No. Not really, no. Thank you. I have, I don't know if you can answer this question, you can try. Thank you. Um, I have been told that um, we would, our group would be able to see alien, and, and a specific alien, uh, that I was told spiritually that we, would, our group would be able to see an alien. Is that, do you know if that's true? And what type of alien that would be? Do you have a name? Was there a name given at the time? Um, there was, but I don't remember what the name was. I would be able to know if I've heard of the name. Um, <clears throat> there are many beings making contact with humans at this time. Those of you who have abilities to channel or be psychic in some way are being contacted. Now there are some that are not of good will. Be careful. Make sure that you protect yourself before calling on any entity to come in. And if someone comes calling to you, make sure that you ask if they are of the light or if they are good. You may ask several different questions that can be interpreted by your, this being to know what your intents are and what their intents are. Good answer. Would they lie? I mean, you... you will know if they lie because you will not feel right. Does that make sense? Because if your intent is aligned with purity, and their intent is not, you will know. I can tell you what they look like. Ah. Continue. Um, tall, thin, um... Do they have human-like faces? Some characteristics. I see. All right, continue. It could be an Orion. But there are other species that, that could fit <coughs> the description, especially uh, some of the reptile species can look humanoid. They have that capacity to change their facial parts and their, they are usually very thin. I'll do more questions and maybe you can come oh, up with yes. more ideas and <clears throat> ask again. Can you tell us whether a solar player will take out the electric grid? We will guard against that. We have ways to guard against severe solar flares, and the ones lately have been moderately severe. 
but you have not had any major blackouts or electrical interference at this time. So you put a shield in the way of the flare after it already happened? You already used it? There is ways to deflect the energy and also we're interdimensional. We can go back several hours and help things. We are not permitted to move in time a great deal because it's dangerous, but we can move several hours at a time. And so if we see that something is going to be potentially fatal, deadly, we will go back and try to fix that within several hours before it happens. Um, like, are scientists and people who watch the skies and things like that, are they aware with these solar flares that it's going on and then all of a sudden it's fixed or you fix it before they're aware? They have awareness of us in some ways because there are miracles that happen they cannot explain and they have seen our ships. They conclude by logic that we have interfered. Can I ask why you would do it? We want to preserve this society, species, whatever you want to call yourselves. We, we know that there are several things that are coming to you that are very fatal. The weather due to global warming, the toxins in the air, the shift of the axis, the solar flares, the seismic grandeur of the tilt of the axis is one of our great concerns because your earthquake that smote Japan could have been even worse, if that is imaginable. No questions? I am sorry. If you have more questions, please feel free. Has it been? Uh, aliens who have been here for 20, 30, 40 years? Yes, and longer. Hundreds of years for some of them, a thousand years for even others, but some of them do not come back. We take a personal interest in you because we know that you're on the verge of your next evolution. It won't happen in a day or a week or a year, but we see that the energy of your brain has opened to telepathy. We are working with several humans to develop that telepathy even greater so they can train others to speak to us directly. I've spoken before, not to you, but to Max about how we interact. And telepathy is our most vital tool in helping you survive. Because this way we know things that we cannot know as a foreign species. Does that make sense to you? Yes. You are like cylinders to us. You're closed off. But now that your telepathy is awakening, we have hopes of joining you as part of the galaxy, or you joining us. So they have integrated into our society physically? Not as of yet. First contact, we, do, we are planning. There is so much to say about that. I am flooded with information. 
First contact is being planned very carefully with the help of telepathic humans, and they will be part of first contact because they need to be an intercessor for your species. They can not, not be there because you would be overwhelmed if just an alien looking species tried to make contact without humans coming first to tell you that they're here. It, does that make sense to you? Okay, so there a timing for this? Are you allowed to tell us the time? There is much planning still to do. You are, as a species, not quite ready. There are too many deficiencies in some cultures that could not be overcome at this moment. However, your ascension of awareness and psychic abilities is bringing up the level of the earth. When this happens, fourth dimensional energy is released into the atmosphere from human beings, which is very interesting. You have the capacity for fourth dimension 150 or 200 years from now, perhaps. Not quite yet, but we see the beginnings of it. Does that make sense to you? I see there is a question on your face. <laughs> there is. Um, as before I said, we have a group. Yes. And we do try to practice telepathy. Is yes. there something that you could tell us that would help us practice telepathy even more? Yes. What could you tell us? The very beginnings of telepathy are intention. Your intention toward another. When you are able to walk up to someone and know what they intend, then that is the beginnings of telepathy. The intentions between your group are all very high. Therefore, you must find a way to camouflage your purity for a moment to see if someone can find evidence of a different intention. Does that make sense to you? No. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay. You must find a difficult space in yourself where the intention is not good so that you can practice with each other. Because you only know your good intention to each other. It's true. Oh. Does that make sense now? Mm -hmm. Now, you may go into the world, and if you can feel the intention of those around you, do you think you can do that? There are many that can at this point. <clears throat> by facial expressions they know, by they can feel the energy of malintent. I believe you can do that. I believe your group would be able to feel malintent from a distance even. This is the beginning of telepathy. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Practice these things when you go places, before you speak to someone, before you know who they are or what they're doing. Make a judgment. But then, don't be harsh with them. Just make a judgment to see if you were correct. That's all. But do not judge them if their intent is not good, because we are all perfect in the eyes of our Creator. You must not judge. Judgment will come to you before them. Does that make sense? Are, are you saying, I always 
think of goodness for people. And I yes. always speak, okay, are you saying that I need, there's got to be a part of me that sees not good stuff? If you were to protect yourself in this day and age, there are the, excuse me, there are those who would not be appropriate for you to be around because they could affect your vibration. <clears throat> Keep your vibration moving in a positive direction. And if you find that people are causing you great stress, look into yourself and find if it is you that is causing the negativity or is it they that are causing the negativity. Because you must find a way to either calm that negativity or disconnect from that negativity. It is essential for Earth at this time to heal the negative parts of your society. Difficult times, but yet essential. 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 Does our thoughts affect other realities? No. Your, but your thoughts affect this reality. Your intentions affect this reality. Your good-natured giving or taking or whatever it is that you do affects your reality and everything around you. And you already knew that. <laughs> I can sense in you all the wonder of the future, the wonder of getting things right, the moving ahead, the knitting together of your species to be a whole and not just a part of who we all are. Because we are a community, yes, but we do not act like a community. Telepathically, we can be a community. Do you understand that? Because we can look at each other and know intention, we can know thoughts, share experiences, but you are separate from each other. And therefore, you do not know the inner workings of the another mind. Every mind here is different, the same with ours. Every mind is different. And if we didn't have telepathy, how would we ever know each other as a community? Does that make sense to you? Because we've learned to love each other as a community. Not all of us are even good or great people. But there's a good part in every one of us. And we tend to lift each other up when necessary to a level where we can communicate in a very good way. Does that make sense to you? How long have you been on the ship that is circling the Earth for North America? We have been 8.9 years. I've known of Earth for 11.7 years. But I, I should say I've been aware of Earth as a personality for that long. And you are a personality. <laughs> How do you get that job? I mean, is it something you volunteer, or is it dictated, or...? I showed a special interest and acumen toward dealing with foreign species, and I studied 
Earth for many years before I was in this particular position. But if I have to be very honest, I've grown more in the last year than I have in many of my years because I'm communicating with humans like Max and the telepaths. They are teaching me more than I could ever learn from any kind of <coughs> curriculum, if you would call it. Any kind of holographic projection, visual aids, interacting is when we learn. And we find that they're much good here. Some species would have you already eliminated, but we have not allowed that. Why would they want to eliminate us? They would like to have your world for their own. They were on worlds that were not compatible with them any longer because of their misuse of it. Also, your minerals, your uranium and radioactive materials, the core of your earth is very important to some of them. Does this make sense to you? There are many things. Your water systems, your actual human emotions were at one time tried to be stolen because they were so unusual and deep. There was a species that wanted to steal your emotions. That did not happen. And I don't know how they could have done it, but they tried. Are you aware of any um, Middle Earth aliens? There are some in the Pacific Ocean, deep at the bottom, yes. But nothing in the core, like in the middle of the Earth? There are life forms there, but they are not from outer space. Agarthens? You heard that term? Agarthens? That's what my understanding is, what's in our inner Earth. Yes, something similar to that. There are fire species that can move within fire. Are they humanoid? No. They are almost fourth dimensional in some respects, but they are not. So it's like between three and four? Yes. But okay. they are It's very, there's no words in your human language to describe to you what they are, really. You're going to have to understand there are a species that we find in the core of planets with volcanic centers, with hot centers. They're not all planets have that, but many do. We have a name for the a magical animal in the fire is called salamander. Yes. But I think maybe this species has a name or you don't have a name which you can say. Funkonshevka. Can you repeat? Funkonshevka. Funkonshevka. Yes. Uh, that is our language. For are they in communication with any of no. alien species? No. They are isolationists for sure several thousand centuries. And Yahweh is not one of those? Okay. No. No. Can you speak a few sentences in your language? What would you like? Oh, can you do a blessing and then translate? Okay. Vriyeka shundarabokoti aranda tabasakashu Yaskuka karanti apaya nuta tutura sentikira ronda kalala sukata pata waka yalera moreravi.
the translation would be, I call down to you blessings. Let the earth surround you with joy. Let the things you lift up lift back. Let the awesome power of Mother Nature and the universe be with you. May you always be proud of the perfection that you attained. May you know that you are loved eternally. And let us be blessed together in our unity. Amen. Thank you much. How, how old are you? In earth years or? Yes, yes, yes. 137. Oh, so you're very young. Yes. I think you live about five, six hundred? Yes. But I moved quickly up the ranks because of my ability to communicate. What's your IQ for an average Yale? Which percentage would, be, would it correspond to? I do not understand the question. Um, are you a very representative of typical Yael, your race? I am not considered typical, but I consider myself more typical than they do. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, you're turning into an earthling. <laughs> do you mean intelligence? Yeah, IQ is intelligence. Yeah. Intelligence. We are all intelligent. Okay. Thank you. I know you are diplomatic. You cannot uh, say that you are exceptional, right? I would not want to. Thank you. Please go ahead. More questions if you want. I have another question. Yes. Greetings. Hi. Um, I was curious about those of us humans that may be hybrids of sorts. Is there a purpose for us or... Are we just kind of like an accident? Or? There is always a purpose for what has happened here on the Earth. Hybrids were experimental, but n not in a chemical or scientific way, but in a spiritual way, if you will. They wanted to develop a higher spiritual realm for Earth. They wanted to develop it quickly because they saw that your axis was going to flip over in so many hundred thousand years and you would be extinct again. Mm -hmm. But we're stopping that. That's not what we have. Mm -hmm. When is it happening? It's already happening. The axis is already flipping, getting ready to flip. We've stopped it at 3%. Mm -hmm. okay. That's why you're experiencing such weather change, seismic reactions, we're trying to calm that down. We can't move it back. That would be even worse. Right. We can stop it. Going backwards would cause twice the damage that going forward caused, if you can understand that, just because of <clears throat> the way your Earth is in orbit around the sun. Does that make sense to you? I have a question. Uh... Back in the 1950s, the Braswell incident in New Mexico? Yes. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? I can tell you a little, but not a lot. Because your government knows everything about that. And they were, you yell, that were in that accident. They were grazed. They were friendly. Were they great or you yell? Grays are you you. Oh, is it, oh, but a different species than you. So Thank you. But they will they look very much the same. Thank you. There is five different gray species. Thank you. They were mistreated, unfortunately. And their technology was uncovered through reverse engineering. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. So there are, on display, in some prominent places on your planet, alien technology. You may not know that, 
what they are exactly, because they won't tell you that they're alien technology, but they are. Can you tell us? I am not permitted to point those things out at this time. <laughs> I am sorry. But they, I will tell you, one is in New York City and one is in Washington, D.C. Hmm. And what were these? One what? They are alien technology. There is a spaceship in Washington, D.C. that was made by aliens. Or, I should say, made by Earthlings with alien technology. Is it true that our military has picked up technological secrets from our planet people? Yes, it is well known. They're totally secret from us still? Yes. Like free energy and um, yes. scalar weapons and such. If you go to your internet, and there are places on the internet where they openly discuss alien technology and interaction. And most people think that because it's so open, it can't be real. <laughs> That's what they want you to believe. They actually are hiding in front of your face. They're saying, oh, this is fictitious, <laughs> this is awful, mm -hmm. you know. But it's an actual conference with press, newscasters, people, and government officials and army officials that are actually telling you what kind of technology they found. But yet people think it's a hoax. And that's what they like. They're happy that you think it's a hoax, but it's actually real. If you pay attention to it, it's way too boring to be anything but real. Could you uh, tell us why the government is so reluctant to let us know that the aliens are out there? Yes, because it gets rid of their control. If they realize that you realize that aliens are protecting the Earth, what do we need an army for? Precisely. Do you understand? There's, mm -hmm. What do we need military for if there's... Your people will say to themselves, what do we need that for? We have aliens protecting us. They have ten times the ability that are... So, to stay in control, our politicians your politicians, your people, keep, excuse me, they want to keep the control. That's the big issue. And the, also, there are per portions of the earth that are not ready for this kind of information. So you're saying it's a fear of them? Yes, it would become chaotic in some areas as well. I would, have been, I, I would have believed that uh, many years ago, but in the current time, I don't believe it's fear. Because I, there's too many now that believe in the uh, Go to your fiction. Bible Belt in the South and you will find <laughs> oh. fear beyond your imagination. Yes. yes. Um, and this is what I speak of in your continent. But the Bible Belt is tight fear, control, oh, yes. and superstition. Mm -hmm. It is spiritual, but it does not reach God the way that goodness and love mm -hmm. and traits that are pure reach God. They must unshackle themselves from the debris of dogma you want to call it that. It is a bondage on them. And that we see more hate there than we see love. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it more difficult for you to deal with religious leaders or politicians? They are the same. <laughs> <laughs> Is the vibration of the planet increasing 
um, at a greater rate than it has in the past? Yes, let me explain something quickly. Which I explained to this group before, not all of you are here though. The ascension has begun, but it starts small. Very, very, very small. But as we gather people, like new people are here tonight, It gets wider like a beam of light shoots out and it collects. When you come into contact with pure love, honesty, joy, and people that are happy to be here and are moving in a way that is positive, how can you not want to be part of that? How? There are those that don't, but they will be overcome. Not in a forceful way, but they are in the shadow, and the light kills shadows. Does that make sense? There's, there's been a lot of stories about the earth separating when the ascension time comes, and then some of us will stay on earth, and there'll be a new earth for some of the people. That people are confusing the ascension with the rapture. They are two different things. I'm not sure that I can explain the basic difference, but ascension does not make people rise off the earth and go into a spiritual body. The ascension is an evolutionary process. It causes man to move to the next level of expanded thought and process and telepathy. This is what the ascension does. Your so-called rapture from revelations in your Bible is not echoed nearly the same by any other religious book. But it is a semi-truth about there will be a time when many people will exit the earth at the same time into a spiritual body. That's all I can relate that to. Does that make sense to you? I see there are even more questions. Don't um, be afraid. I'm sorry. Uh, no problem. Earlier you talked about abduction. Yes. There's no more abduction. That, that was a while back. There's All no right. more abductions. Can, can one become abducted in the dream state? Yes. But our species and the species that we are in an alliance with do not do any form of abduction anymore. There are species that still do abduction, but we are not of that species or alliance. But they still do that, yes. Do you know if they're benevolent or no? There are two species that still do abduction. One is benign and the other is not. Is that a, an answer that you can accept? One is purely scientific, and one is malevolent. What? Malevolent. Malevolent. Oh. Bad. <laughs> they want the things that you have. Your minerals, your water, your sky your planet. Back to the ascension. When is the first wave of ascenders to go? They don't go anywhere. They don't go anywhere. They, the first wave of ascenders will become the first telepaths on Earth. They will be feared. But once they let them 
selves be who they really are, no one will fear them at all. They will not want to seek information that they shouldn't have. They will want to connect in a positive way. Now that's not to say that at the beginning there will be those who seek to do harm as a telepath. But you will know them by their intention and another telepath will find them. Hmm. They could not hide. They would not be able to hide because of their intention. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. If another telepath comes across them, they're exposed. Um, I'd like to ask a question. Uh, would you consider this um, telepathic or just intuition? Like, you, you're a person that has lots of love for everyone. Mm -hmm. But yet, sometimes you run across somebody and you start to go near them and you want to back away. That's the first part of telepathy. Knowing the intent of somebody that wishes to cause mm -hmm. negativity in the area or with you. That is the first part of telepathy. You will be able to sense their energy mm -hmm. before they've even released it. I've had that happen a few times. This is the first beginning. Does this make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Can we change their energy by sending them lots of love? You cannot change their energy without their will being changed. Mm -hmm. Their will has to change by your will being of the light and love. Then if they see the things in you that they want, their will will change. But it has to be their will. Your will cannot control them. Right. I know you're limited with what you can tell us about the future. Yes. Um, is, we don't I, go that far. Well, <laughs> um, I just had a concern about our government, and this could be conspiracy theory. And I didn't know if your species is also protecting us to some degree from our own politicians and government, from maybe some malevolent design to. Well. Yours, where do I even start with that? <laughs> I'll be, yes. Let me tell you this. There is a group of spirit beings named L. And they're in charge of your finances, commercial, well-being. I don't know if I'm saying that your money situations as a, a world and they find it unusable. They cannot use the way that you, you have things set up. They are planning to crash the economic systems. I can tell you that because no one would believe that. Mm -hmm. I mean in the government. Uh, we're too strong. We can't. <laughs> I mean I uh, imitating a politician that I saw on your website. He was certain that everything will stay just the way it is. Or worse. <laughs> but, when it falls apart, L will be there to build it back up. They will be our leaders to help you rebuild your society because they know how to do it. They've done it in several worlds mm. that are now working very smooth. So they are spiritual beings, not aliens, right? Yes, El is more spiritual than alien, or is spiritual, I should say. So is this financial realignment likely to happen, as some sources say, very soon? 2027. That's the 2027 date we've been hearing. Mm -hmm. okay. Is it finalized or it's flexible? Well, if you, if you, L is very superstitious <laughs> in some ways. 27, 2 and 9 is a final number. It's an, an end number.
But if you add the two onto it, it's an 11, which is two beginning numbers. Mm -hmm. So they double begin and final. They have a finality, which is the 27. <coughs> and then they add the two to it to make a double beginning. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Count at 11, 11 then? No, 2027. Can you tell me what you know about Jesus? Was he a telepathy? Yes. Jesus was a great telepath. He channeled many times. Many of his parables were channeled from other aliens. Because their planet had undergone many things of the same nature. And so he was aware of God, his Father. And in many ways, he was a son of God, many ways. His purity was very, very bright. Does that make sense? But he was a channeler. He taught his people how to become prosperous without having anything. And even they were prosperous still when they had nothing. They went from home to home. They went lacking for nothing. But yet they were given everything they needed by the law. What do you call that? The law of attraction. Because they prayed Prayer is so powerful. They prayed for what they needed, and God interceded for them, and they got everything they needed. Now, of course, some of them were martyred. That couldn't be helped. He could not step in and do miracles when he's not there. He was there in spirit, but he could not interact with the physical at that time. Would you, would you tell us about the Bilderberg group? I don't know this group. What is it? The, the group that runs the world? Oh, MIC. We know them as a different name. They have their finger in a little bit of everything. They have, you may think that you are safe, you are in many senses, but they know everything about you. At this day and age, unless you live on the, the plains of Siberia, they know who you are, what you do, how much money you make, where you go, if you watch pornography. They know all these things. How many calls you make a day, They have their hands and control in politics, religion, every possible thing you can imagine. And it takes, it has taken them a while to do this, but they've been in power for many years now. Is that what you meant? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, they even know how long every phone call that you made was and who it was to and what the source of the information was. And is that through the internet or through other, other methods we don't know about? Other methods you are not aware of because they, like I said, they know Verizon, AT&T, Time Warner. They have operatives everywhere. And these people are doing this for the good of the world. They are convinced that this is what they should do to save the world is to spy on everybody and make sure that everybody is within the control of MIC. They were told that. That was the propaganda, if you will, that has seized so many of their people. There are few that have left. And if they leave, their lives are in danger. Mm -hmm. Where is their propaganda coming from? Everywhere their operatives are, because their operatives are the ones that are spreading it. They are in the Bible Belt, keeping them tightly aware that Jesus will come back any second. And they can't love anybody because 
judgment is what they have to do, but it's all gone through such a twisted mentality that we see that is many, many places on your world. But this thing is, you're a cylinder. You cannot understand some things that are celestial, esoteric, because you are a cylinder. But we're breaking that cylinder with the light that is growing. Do you understand? The light will come through and telepathy will break through the cylinder. Because you, you can't stay there. You can't stay there. A question? Or were you just... Trying to digest. Yeah. Can you tell about uh, your religion, your connection to God, your religious practices? We do much meditation when we can. But even our work is our religion because we are helping move people up into a greater vibration. We are working at a spirit level with humanity. We are also working in a physical and a natural level. But our intention it started in the spirit. So therefore, our religion is helping you, as if perhaps you needed help, which you do, at this point. But then you help us as well, with your prayers, with your thoughts, with your positive actions. You also encourage us to do our job as better. Does that make sense? Are you? praying using words, are you in contact with angels and maybe some higher consciousnesses which you also know? Angels choose when they want to come into your reality. It is the same with us. If they want to be in our reality, they make themselves known. They give us the message. They let us know what they want us to know. Are you using words and prayers? Yes. Uh, are you words are very powerful. Are you there are some vibration words that have great vibrations. The um is a great vibration. Do you know why? It, if it's gone long enough, you all become part of it. Do you understand that? You all become part of the um. It is not separate from anyone. You all hear it the same way. You all perceive it in a peaceful way. You all love it. And it becomes a higher vibration in you, bringing you up, knitting you together, bringing you to a higher place. So the OM is one example of a word with a high vibration. And prayers have high vibrations. The word Jesus resonates very high in the universe. Emmanuel, El. Some of these words have great resonation in the universe and therefore connect you to even other planets and galaxies and peoples off world because they know those words too. Does that make sense to you? There are some words known throughout the galaxy, like Max. No. <laughs> Max is known throughout the galaxy at this point, but because of his writings, they have taken many of his thoughts and translated them into other languages. And but in so you mentioned El and Jesus, which you know about. Are there any other gods which are historic uh, deities from our past which you also are dealing with and in contact with? Muhammad, Buddha, Gandhi. Gandhi was actually a hybrid spirit 
being. No one could have that much strength in the human body. Do you realize what he went through? He was unhuman. He was not fully human, but he taught humanity what humanity should be like. Does that make sense? Let, let me just change a bit the question. Do your, 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 your gods or your higher consciousnesses, do we have somebody in common so we know their name and you are in connection with them and yes. praise them? Oh. Yes, God would be your name. Yes. Allah mm -hmm. is known in the universe. Mm -hmm. Yes, we pray to God and Allah and Ra. Is Ra a separate thing than uh, Allah? Yes, but slightly underneath, that's all. Are you in connection with Ra? Correct. Raw material is very much correct, right? Yes. Many on earth are taught from raw material and respected very much. It's maybe one of the step stones. Another teaching is the, uh, the messages by the nine. Are you in connection with the nine? The books of the nine which were channeled to the earth. Take care. Okay, welcome here. Thank you. Please do must leave. Uh, thanks, this do. Your, you were extraordinary. It was highly spiritual, highly informational. It was... Im it's hard to describe. Thank you very much. Pass him our I'm great sorry things. sorry he had to leave so quickly. That's okay. I'm used to that. <laughs> he did an extraordinary job. So Take welcome. Uh, Take is a Liron, uh, a feline humanoid uh, working in the colonies. And what's your position? There is no name for it on your planet. You're in charge of information gathering and... You would call me uh, executive, administrative, secretary with several different tasks. Thank you. Does that make any... Yes, makes sense. There is no word for my position here. Okay. But I assist these do much. Thank you. Do you have a message for today? Yes. Thank you. These two can't talk anymore. It's okay. <laughs> That's the message? Yes. <laughs> uh, do, 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 how long are you planning to be here? Can you talk to us? One moment. Yeah. <sighs> I can stay for a few minutes. I think the best thing which you could do, can you give us a blessing in your language and translate it? I think this is so incredible. Or a prayer. beyond my imagination. I cannot retrieve your thoughts. Bless you in praise and infinity.
Amen. Thank you much. Can you give us the numbers from the colonies, the news, the update? Oh, that's okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate your visit. speaks Jim kind of gets more exhausted when this dude spoke he was feeling good in the beginning he was losing the, the breath but then this dude just brought some extra energy and Jim felt very very well it's up to them if they want to come through or Lakesh was scheduled but I think they kind of pushed I'm him. here hey Lakesh old friend <laughs> nice to have you around thank um, you they used up all my time. Yes, but you still can give us a spiritual message or whatever you like. Welcome here. I just wanted to say greetings. Greetings, greetings to everyone. Hello. 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 That's all. I just... Do you have a second to read your poetry? Yes, your, your, your poems are very nice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> He's a strange one. He likes my poetry. Nobody else does. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're very really good. I'm serious. On my planet, they're like, yeah. <laughs> keep your day job. <laughs> <laughs> I took that from something I saw on your internet. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us a bit about your planet? Yes. I'm a blue. I I think I've done this before. I'm about five foot two. I'm I'm blue. I have one uh, one uh, big toe and three little toes, and one from and three little fingers. I'm sort of bulbous looking, sort of like a gingerbread man. I, uh, but I like that look. I really, really, my women are all of them. But I... <laughs> Lucky you. Yes. But any, what was I? Uh, the planet, about civilization. Oh, yeah. You have several trillions of you made, years, right? You made me think something else. Uh, <laughs> okay. And I glide. In my society, I'm a glider. They choose, some choose to walk, some choose to run or sit. But I am permitted to glide. That is a privilege that I have gained. I'm allowed to speak to Earth and that is a privilege that I've gained through. Our planet is a, a planet of uh, we move up from level to level of uh, learning. That's how we uh, that's how we move as a planet. There's a belt around the middle of our planet, there's four of them, that actually keeps the planet moving and all the different things in place in our cultures. And once we finished a level of that, say we wanted to be a nanobiologist or a quark specialist, we then have to spend 100 days helping the planet live. And this gives us time to reevaluate what our next job will be and give us appreciation for the fact that we don't have to work every day. We just have to work that 100 days after we achieve a level. It's, and then we can think about what we want to do 
for the next level. So it's really quite a wonderful thing. And then when you achieve a level, we have celebrations. There's always celebrations on our planet, always. It's a wonderful thing. We have, a, when a child is born, there's a celebration. When someone achieves a level, there's a celebration. When they have a quick day, that would be their birthday. Then we have a celebration. When their org level is at seven, then we have a celebration. Um, an org level is your vibrational level, by the way. Uh, whenever they attain certain things, certain levels, we have celebrations. And it's a wonderful place to be. And that's why we're so interested in Earth is uh, you have some wonderful things that happen here. Very wonderful. We like your celebrations. We like your intensity of emotion. We like that your thought processes are muddled. I love that. Because they're not something that you can just say, I know they're going to do this today because I don't know that. There are a few of you that are creatures of habit, but still, you go outside of that now and then. <laughs> right? I mean, I was watching this one human and every day for 26 days they did exactly the same thing. On the 27th day, they did something totally different. <laughs> I was totally going, why? <laughs> why? Why did you do something totally different when you did something the very same way for all that time? I don't know. See, that's why you're interesting. I like that. So then I'll find out later why. But I found out why, you know. Ah. <sighs> Oh, okay, I'm realizing now. Okay. <laughs> do you experience emotion? Yes, but not in the intensity that you do. Your, your emotional intensity is probably at least three times greater. And that's why oh, I try to experience everything through the body when I'm in the body things they won't let me experience, but I'll get there someday. <laughs> I will. I'm determined. But, yes. How, how do you reproduce? We like reproduce humans? very similarly to the way you reproduce, except without the noise. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, there is noise, but it's not like what you make. <laughs> I I thought I thought some of you were dying. <laughs> I was ready to resuscitate. But no, I'm not allowed to do that. Um, I, I have a question. It it's it's really not a question, uh, about more of a statement. If I were to describe an alien, yes, this is a different one. Oh, a different one. Yes. Then what? From before. Oh, I wasn't here for that one. That's right. <laughs> um, would you be able to maybe tell me what species it is? If you describe it well enough. Um, uh, I would say maybe this tall, like this big, arms, legs, short. Am I, make, am I describing it right, Sharon? Just about. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That was There's, this tonight, Angie. You no. saw this. No, this one. That is. A, was it a gray color? Uh, uh. There is a species of grays that would fit into that description. They're very short, and sort of bulbous. Yeah. Yes, and um, they're not often seen on your world. Not often. Um. <laughs> but they uh, they do exist, and um, if you saw one of those, that's a rare. That's rare. That's very rare. Is it in summertime? Yes. Yeah. Where Can I ask where this species was when you saw them? Um, they actually came to our group in in Arabia. Empire Haven. No, no. It, it, Sharon's apartment. Yeah. You all oh, saw that's right. them? That's yes. right. Yeah. You all saw them? No, no, no. Just in your head? Yes. Oh. Ah. 
But they, they projected my, themselves. So I saw with my eyes, in my mind, I could see So them. they projected themselves into they your brain. They came with the tall one also. Right, yeah. right. The they tall, came with the tall if one. they came with the tall one, that was a disguised Pleiadian because they travel with Pleiadians. Definitely. So yes. is that... They do bad. travel with Pleiadians. I know that for a fact. Are they good or bad? Uh... They came to just neutral. Teach they us. don't. They don't really. Uh, they they would probably be what you would consider good because even though they don't do anything to really help humanity, they'll help certain people do things here. Okay. All right. I was just. And if they came to your group, they must have thought it was interesting what you were discussing or what you were feeling or what you were entitling the, at that moment. So. All right. Okay. Yes, yeah, okay. And they do travel with Pleiadians. Were there, they were there at the same time, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, they do travel together. What about the, the ones that look like huge grasshoppers? Oh, the uh, antoids, perhaps. Antoids. Yes. Well, they look like big ants <laughs> or praying mantises, sort of. Yeah. yeah. They could be one of two different races, but you, the other race doesn't come around Earth, so I would think that they're those. Yes. Hey. Now, can they translate into our language the same way you do? What? Do those praying mantis types, would they be communicating with us like the way you are right now? Um, no. Um, they have technology, just like we do, that interprets your language, but they don't speak to Earthlings. They only listen. They don't ever speak. Are they ever. the founders? No. Okay. Do we look strange to you? You're funny. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I like that about you too. So, it's like, oh, I can see other species in your faces, some, some of you. You, do you know what I mean? I can see that that some of you are possibly hybrids, or at least there is a, a chance that you are. Yes, I can even point you out if you want. But yes, um, yeah, 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 Kim is a hybrid. She knows Kim, that. Kim, raise your hand if you. Oh, okay. And Aryan, that's a whole story right there. Aryan is actually a human alien. So we'll pass that. Mary has a little bit in. You have quite a bit of Pleiadian in you. Oh, I, my magic wand is not working. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always in trouble, no problem. Yes, you are definitely hybrid, and you are as well. Hybrid with what? You know. <laughs> um, this gentleman right here. Mm -hmm. That's what my mother said. See, I know. No, the cash knows. But anyway, um, and uh, there might be some hybrid that I didn't even pick up. But but you're talking about ancient historical. I, I passed you by because I don't even want to talk. About it. But anyway, <laughs> I just wanted to comment that you know we're not talking that you're not the child of your parents. You right. have historically through generations. Right. Historically you up. through time, uh, there was some something. And Bill, of course, you are. You know. So. Does that, that have anything to do with. I'm a twin. Is, is that have anything ooh, to do with. It? Totally. Well, you're not really telepathically connected, so. Some twins are very telepathically connected. Yes. Um, in your case, a little here and there. Um, but you have more of the alien blood than, mm -hmm. than your other half, yes. So, yes, okay, I understand that now, okay. Talk to me later. <laughs> I wish, <laughs> yeah. Um, a great question to ask if anybody is brave enough, if you are having children up there, hybrid children up there. Um, there are only, in the past, there were quite a few. Right now, there's not as many hybrid children. 
and there's a reason for that that I cannot go into. But um, it's a safety precaution. There was a hybrid problem about 20 years ago. And um, something happened that was unpleasant. So, uh, we'll, and what, so they What species has the most highest knowledge about the future and about God? Well, that's a hard question because I don't know all the species that well. But I can tell you that as a society, we embrace God every day, every moment. We try as much as possible. Of course, that's impossible. But, um, but we like to consider ourselves a very spiritual society. We know that the Pleiadians, the Lyrans, Yil are all very spiritual. El, the serious people, I could go on. But as far as the most, boy, that would really be very difficult to say. Who has the clearest vision of our future? Well, considering the fact that they're not allowed to move in the future more than a few days, I'd say not very many. Because <laughs> It's very dangerous to move quickly into the future, and it's very dangerous to move quickly into the past. Mm -hmm. You were only limited to a few days at the most, because uh, it's a whole uh, discussion about how time works and how reality intermingles with linear time, circular time, chaotic time, and folded space, which is actually a form of time change as well. I called it folded time, but it's actually folded space. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it changes. If, if you bring this part of space over to here, then you change time. So it is folded time. So How, do, how does that work in the time travel? Um, we use uh, the folded, the folded, it's much easier, it does not damage space, it does not damage anything in the galaxy. So to fold it and have it go back is fine. Chaotic time you'll find in black holes or something of that black matter, black holes, and it's very, you would be disassembled immediately in contact with it. So um, you don't want to get anywhere near that. And uh, circular time is, it's a loop, but uh, some species have learned how to use that loop and move in time that way, okay, but other people, other species that got caught in it continue to go and have the same day over and over and over again, like uh, some, it, it, it's not a good thing, but because you don't realize it. It's, it's just like you're deja vu, deja vu, deja vu. So, um, and is that Einstein's theory of relativity? That it encompasses that, yes. His theory of relativity was far beyond his time. However, he got a few things wrong. But yes. hey, for a man at that at that era to be projecting out there, you know, he had to have a little hybrid in him. So yes, 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 definitely. Is there a way that you can? project yourself or an image telepathically to us? If it's so permitted, yes. I, if you could actually see inside Jim, uh, there is actually a, uh, a, a, an image of me there because when I come, I'm not like these do or any of the other ones that come in. I actually project myself into him. I'm the only one that does that. That we are a little more advanced for that, because I'm from, on a planet. I can project myself all the way here. They can't do it from their planet, so I'm the I'm sort of special that way. But do you use their help, their technology to translate your signal to here? Are you using their ship? No. As antenna? No. 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 We don't use them. Why they're not the connected? If I were to use them, that would be considered part of an alliance with them, and I'm not in alliance with them at all. 
but they are in uh, power to prohibit you entering when they wish to, right? Yes. They do have some, they have some jurisdiction over Earth since they are helping it, and I'm really not. So law would state that they have the upper hand that way because they're actually helping you, whereas we're just communicating. We're really not helping you. Thank okay? you. Anyway, so for you all if, your help to I come us. there and uh, if they let me come here and I do this, they can stop my communication at the blink of an eye if they choose to. Because this is their jurisdiction. If there's a storm coming, if they need to do something uh, with the nature or earth or whatever it is, if the seismic things or the tilt of the axis, they can say out. And I have to go because they have uh, the safety parameters. What's the name of that law? Is it some universal law? No, it's a dies du law, but it's it's perfect near. Thank you. Uh, I, he's the one that put it in place. Okay. Are you familiar with uh, the nine? The channel is by the nine, the nine. No. Ancient gods and that oh, sort of I think they're probably called something else. Okay. I probably know them by something else. I every time somebody asks me something like that, it's you. I usually go back and it's they call it something else okay. on Earth than we call it. So, like the very first channeling session that I did, um, the uh, law of attraction we had called we had never heard of that. We call it something else. Well, how so, do you call it? Uh, we, we heard of it, but I didn't synchronicity know it something. Um, it was um, uh, attraction. Oh, what did we call it? Uh, it just I just blanked out. Uh, are you familiar with the Ra material? Ra material? Ra. After the Ra god? god the god Ra? Oh, yes, okay. Uh, are you... Is it part of... the sun, yes. Is it also your god? There is connections, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. So, um... Uh, Any more questions? Well, I was wondering if you're familiar with like Abraham Hicks as a channel. I, I, uh, I see all different kinds of channelers everywhere. I, I don't learn all their names, but I do like to to watch whenever they're channeling someone because I get an idea of um, what kind of energy each alien has when they're doing that and what kind of energy has to be in the human to do that as well. And it's a very interesting study because some aliens cannot go into some people, whereas, and I think Max picks up on this, spirit, the spirit world is a totally different frequency than the alien world. So aliens do not, aliens and spirits in the same channel, usually it's very hard my question is, I was wondering, is, is the Abraham group or a group of entities, whatever they are, uh -huh. would they be more of a spiritual beings or would they be from a planet? And if, if I think they're planetary, planet, yeah. What they're... planet would you know? Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? What's the name of their Um, Abraham Hicks. Hicks. Uh, they Aster... call themselves Abraham. Yeah, they... Aster oh, okay. Abraham. Oh, 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 oh. They call those. themselves those are, oh, hold on just one yeah, moment. Yeah, those are spirit people. Spirit. Oh, those are spirits. Yeah. They were spirit people. I have a question related. So you mentioned the spirit world and human and physical world. So as I understand, we are now in third dimension and our spirits when we die go to seventh dimension and then come back somehow mm -hmm. into new incarnation. Mm -hmm. And I was asked by somebody else. Are the aliens also going from four dimension to seventh? Yes. Are they in the same space in the seventh dimension? Yes, there's, we use, all use the same dimensions. They're, well, we all use the same seven dimensions, but we all have different linear dimensions that veer off from that. Do you understand that? It's, it's quite... Um, like these do works in ten dimensions, ten different time, linear time dimensions. Timelines. Yeah, timelines. Okay. But um, we still all use the same basic dimensions. 
So in the seventh dimension, our human that so, uh, discarnate souls and say alien discarnate souls are they mingling together or are they kind of separate in different clusters? Are they talking to each other? Are are discarnate souls? They're in souls? their own realms of communication. They can if they choose to, mm -hmm. but many times. Uh, a, most riches choose to go to their own place mm -hmm. to decide if they're going to come back to their place or and there are times when they decide to go back to someplace else mm -hmm. and that has happened too but they go first to their place okay and then they can decide whether they want to go somewhere else or not because they are in the spirit realm and those spirit realms can connect Mm -hmm. But they are divided, but you can still get to them. I mean, they're not divided by permanent walls or anything mm -hmm. of that nature. They're divided by intention. Are you in communication normally? Can you communicate at will to your discarnate spirits, like your parents or not something? Not at will. Ag um, we, we, like you, can meditate and, and get in contact with the spirit world. We're a little better at it than you are, mm -hmm. but we still have to use our use our meditations because to get to the spirit world is a very special way to tr communicate, and it, you can't just travel there. You can't just go there. You have to be in the right frame of mind. You have to be in the right vibrational space. And you have to know what your intentions are in that whole thing. Because if there's not a good intention for it, you won't get there. Mm -hmm. um, your intentions, and coming back to intentions. Intentions are a very big part of that. A very big part of that. Because you can't get to a spiritual level unless you have <coughs> intentions and there's a purpose and it's going to it's going to enlighten you or bring you up or or do something positive. You can't just go there. It's not allowed. What physical uh, posture do you use for meditation? Do you sit, lay down, or stand or glide? I there's actually several different. I can stand on my head. I can um, lay on my back with my one foot up. I, there's several different ways that blues can do that. There are special meanings to the to the way we meditate. Um, some of it comes through ritual and tradition, which we have as well. You know, to follow tradition, the you don't necessarily have to do it that way, but to do it by tradition is very fam familiar and family-like and draws love and attention to that, that particular act. And maybe it's now a good time. Maybe you can give us a blessing on your language and translate, if it is appropriate. <laughs> Hold up. I'll give you a very short one. I'll Thank you. Because I have to go soon there. My people are getting anxious for me to return. Melihat hu shwanta frakata potum ikararan sapa sapatan ur nanin kikaratanta pariandadu. Ah, I'm running with the stars. I'm feeling the sky. God is all around me. As I step into the void, I will not fall. For he is there to catch me. Amen. Thank you much. Thank you. Go ahead. How do we convey to a extraterrestrial that we are looking for a teacher as a group? Is there something we can do? You just did it. Okay. <laughs> 
Well, I have to go. Thank you very much for your visit. You were extraordinary today. Uh, I'm very, Thank you. I like it very much. Thank you. Thank you. And say hi to your people and to your blessings friends. To you all. And my mate says blessings as well. Thank you. <laughs> Thirsty. <laughs> well, Jim is returning to the room. Uh, if you are new and have not been here before and would like to be on a mailing list for events like this, just give us your name and phone number and uh, email address. Um, not, it's a very private list. I don't share it with anybody else except these two guys. <laughs> Thank you. It was long as Jim's died. What? Longest dive. Of oh, I'm on the list. Thank you. Longest okay. dive? Dive. You dived into the spirit world for a long time. Really? Was it that long? Yeah, yeah very long. long. Like, about two hours. Oh, serious. my gosh. Very serious. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. It was very great. Helpful. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, you got to see it. Oh, my goodness. Two hours? About. I've got to yeah, say, this couple hours. on the end, when you walked in the room, I picked up Alien and what we do, too. Do. Yeah. I, I did. Yeah, so. tell Akesh it's not appropriate to name names on the video recording. I did. <laughs> you can point oh, the finger, you. but you know, no, on the recording yes. it's not appropriate. When you walked in, I was. I didn't name names. Yeah. No, that's fine. Hmm? 144. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't hear him name names. <laughs> <laughs> it's not you, it's Lakesh. It's. Oh well. <laughs> Lakesh. Oh, bad boy. <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't hear him name names. But of course, it's like listening outside of a door. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? I walk in and I'm getting chills. I thought, yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's like listening outside of a door. You can hear, but you can't. Don't get it all. Unless they come and use one of your words or phrases. If they come and borrow something from your consciousness, then I can hear them. Right. But other than that, you can hear outside the door. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, um, but you can hear the words, but it's just sort of muffled like that. Mm. So. Thanks, Jim. Good job. Thank you. Yeah. I think these prayers make a huge, huge difference. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah. They did prayers? Yeah, everybody. Oh, really? A blessing. All three of them come mm -hmm. blessing. Second had... hour was very short. The tall woman was very short. Oh, okay. It was she was here for maybe five, ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. As usual, Dizdu had to leave. Like, he had urgent call. He was on call all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> From other timeline, maybe. <laughs> okay, very good. So apparently these other Pesquilum aliens are... All different heights, all different skin color. Yeah, this dude is about six cases, feet. All different appearances. Mm -hmm. Six feet tall, gray, uh, 65 kilograms. I didn't ask Take how much does she weigh, but she is about nine feet and, you know, one and a half human weight, normal weight. Very strong. Mm -hmm. And Lakesh is 5.2 and... Uh, From here, shallow. Uh, transparent, here. translucent. Did you? From, she has facial hair. No. I didn't get it. But I not, it just in the bottom. Change coming. Right. But it goes on like into your chest. Do you know if she's a carnivore on the board of vegetarian? I have no idea. I'm really I didn't ask her that. I was just being a feline. I didn't know if she had a feline appetite. I don't know. I didn't ask her about that. Oh, yeah, he has to not name me. Ask them, uh, you know, if, um, if I want to hug, who would be hugging? Uh, who would be willing to hug? When he said, which one? Maybe I don't mind hugging, but you have some warning, so they wouldn't crush you. Oh, yeah. Actually, I just, I was, yes, I'm absolutely serious.